The Wild Africa Trek, a new adventure at Disney's Animal Kingdom. My particular experience with this was covered in my two videos, Wild Africa Trek, The Complete Experience, and Crossing the Bridges with Alex. Today I want to revisit a bit of it to cover some points that I wanted to clarify about my video and also to compare how it aligns with the regular safari that every visitor to Animal Kingdom is free to take without extra fee. On our trek experience, we stopped at the end of Harambe Village where our guide pointed out two trees of interest. The first of these trees is a baby boabob tree. This is a real one. The big ones out on the savanna are fakes because it wouldn't grow here. They are cement replicas. This is a real one growing in Harambe Village. At least I think it's a real one. The second tree of note is the Kigelia africanus, or the African sausage tree. These sausage-shaped fruits, which give the tree its name, are favorites among the hippos, but are not edible by humans, though they may be brewed to make an adult beverage. This was another picture that captured some attention. One person thought it was a predator in a tree. It is not a predator, but the prey. This is the preferred dining experience for some wild cats who will take their captured prey up into a tree where they may eat it without interruption from other diners. I returned to the beginning of the trek where I got special permission to enter the restricted area with a returning group of trekkers so that I could photograph a ceremony that takes place at the end of the Wild Africa Trek experience that I had not photographed when I did it. The returning group of trekkers is, and they're not Star Trek fans, African trekkers are gathered together in a small clearing just below the outfitter's hut and a cast member brings down a large wooden box. It is divided into five compartments, one of which contains a pile of small white stones. And in an African style of voting, each member of the party is given a white stone, and they in turn go up and put it in the section of the box that corresponds to their choice for where they would like part of their fee that will be donated to wildlife conservation to go. There are four choices. You can choose to support the lions, the elephants, the white rhinos, or the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund and let them decide where it will go. <laughs> That's where I went. Leaving the area, we get this nice shot of the base of Fort Harambe. In my original video, The Complete Experience, you'll hear at one point I yell out 600 years. What you don't hear is that our guide had asked the question of did anybody know how old Fort Harambe was? I didn't know, but you'll also notice that Lonnie, our photographer, was right next to me. And if you listen closely, you will hear her whisper to me 600 years. Thus, I was able to shout out with great certainty the correct answer and amaze our guide. After this, I returned to the regular safari because I wanted to see how the two aligned. While I was waiting for my safari vehicle, one of the Wild Africa Trek trucks went by, heading out for its waiting point where it would pick up the current batch of trekkers and take them on the driven portion of their adventure. Out on the safari, after the first turn into the area known as the Hippo Pools, over to the right-hand side you can see the first overlook of the Wild Africa Trek where the people are hitched on to the support rods and they are viewing a couple of hippos in the pool. This was a good day. We only had one hippo. They got two hippos. These hippos know they're going to get fed if they come there. The Disney cast member person sitting right there has things to throw them. Watermelon. They love watermelon. And it's really amazing to see this giant mouth open and to see a watermelon go in there and the whole thing just goes in the mouth. Here you can see that same harness support system without anybody in the way and see how it is set up there. It's a very solid structure. I think you could drive a truck into it without harming it. Also note there's a fence here. You cannot go past that fence until you are connected to the harness support system and you are not disconnected from it until you exit past that fence. Connection and disconnection is done by a Disney cast member. You will notice in many pictures the vests have a big D-ring here. That is where that harness connection goes when you are not using it. You unclip it from there, hand it to the cast member, they clip you onto the harness support rail, 
and you have about 10 feet of line to lean out over those cliffs and try to climb off the bridge or what have you. Don't try to climb off the bridge. Here we return to a picture from the trek itself. Note that we are at the end of the second bridge. Here is the first bridge. And note the curve in the road here. This is the curve in the road after the second hippo pond. You are usually looking down into the water to spot the crocodiles. But if you look up, you will see this bridge. A point I want to make for people who may do the trek in the future, something I didn't do and nobody did that I noted, that photopass photographers didn't and I didn't. When crossing that first bridge, look to your left and you'll have a unique view of the second hippo pond. Most people are too concerned with mastering that new experience of that somewhat challenging rope bridge. And this is their first time in the harness and using it to cross the bridge. And their attention has been called off to the right side where the Nile crocodiles are. But on that first bridge, look to your left and you'll get some interesting views. On the second bridge, you will cross right over the crocodiles and get all the chance to see them that you need. Here, as the safari vehicle is driving around that curve, you look up and you can see the first bridge. A little further on, you see the second bridge. And that bridge is right over the Nile crocodiles. Here is the cliff where we will once again at the end of the second bridge be harnessed to a harness support rail and stand at the edge of that cliff and overlook these crocodiles. A very large crowd of crocodiles. I'm, I'm always amazed by how large a crowd of crocodiles are here from the very first time I saw this. These are rather active crocodiles too. You can see there's one right here climbing out of the water. There was some movement among them. If you're used to gators, as I am down here, they never move. <laughs> to see a gator move is a very rare experience. But these crocodiles, you have a good chance on the trek of seeing some action in them. So keep an eye on them and uh, look for some movement. As we enter the savanna on the regular safari, most people at this point are looking to the right to the baobab tree, the large baobab tree, the first one you see at the savanna. But off to your left is this newly built loading platform. This is where the trek truck loads its passengers for the driven portion of the experience and you can see they walk right onto the platform via this ramp and so they don't have to climb into the truck they walk right into it the truck then pulls out from that platform and joins us on the regular road through the safari although at a couple of points it will pull off that road and stop and park for a while so you can shoot the animals with a camera whether on the trek or the safari, the first thing you see when you enter the savanna is this large baobab tree. This is actually a reproduction in concrete of a baobab tree because the real ones could not survive the Florida weather. It does get cold down here. This tree has that huge trunk for a reason. There is a very short rainy season where this thing grows and it has to store all the water it needs for the entire year in a very short period of time and that is where it does it. It holds it in that trunk. That trunk is basically a large canteen. Once out on the savanna, you can now look off to your right and you will see up on the hill the clearing where the boma has been built, the covered raised platform where the trek participants get to have their meal, either breakfast or lunch. I had breakfast. It was fantastic. I would like to have it again and again and again and overlook the entire savanna on this side and the elephant pool on the other side and the flamingo pool with the hidden Mickey. Inside the Boma, and there is actually a name for it now, but I missed that rock that where the name is painted on. It's out on the safari road. All these posts are carved. There's an interesting story behind this post and that's why I featured it in my video because the carver who came out to carve it with his drawings and his tools all ready to go, sat down and started to carve and a giraffe walked over to the railing to watch him. It stood there for the entire time it took him to carve it such that the carver abandoned his sketches and went directly from life, from the real giraffe standing there then, and he signed the name of that giraffe into the post.
At the end of the safari, after we've found Little Red in the back of the truck and chased down the poachers and cut short our two-week safari and are heading for the exit, <laughs> this new platform has been added. This is just before you disembark from the regular safari, off to the left. And this is where the Trek truck parks to disembark its passengers, who then walk out and join the path at the train station for Rafiki's Planet Watch and head up to the village from there. That wrapped up my day at Animal Kingdom, and I got my parting shot.